Oké, okay, gentlemen, it's kind of an historic meeting. The two of you met before. Uh, Mr. Brun, was that John? I think it was in September 2009. On what occasion? I gave a, a lecture on Darwin and Wallace for the... Uh, South Darwin East. and Wallace? Darwin and Wallace, yes. And you were there? Roy? Yes, and I was so disappointed because John had... Well, somebody had publicized the lecture and that it would be the real story of Darwin and Wallace. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. real story. That was my type. But it was the real type, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> responding to the idea that um, I had written this book about Darwin and Wallace recently. And so John was obviously expected to give that. And actually, he didn't get around to it. He never actually yeah. discussed the, um, the Darwin-Wallace connection in any real sense, except that Darwin sent the letter. Mm-hmm. And it so what happened? You were interfered? Oh, well, uh, no, I don't interfere. A man called David um, Hallmark asked a question which, which suggested there was more evidence uh, to show that Darwin Wallace um, had led the story when David was uh, actually, um, sorry, um, John. and John was actually giving out. And so there was a discussion between those two for a while and then the man obviously running the discussion felt that this was getting a bit too difficult and, um, and closed it down quite quickly as I wanted to ask a question so I nabbed him uh, at the podium and started to say what I wanted to say and of course uh, he was just led away to eat and we were left to go home. Mm. It was not a very successful meeting. It went very well. It had some nice yeah. questions Indeed. and a nice dinner. Um, but you see, the, u- the usual arrangement for, for a talk is that you have a certain amount of time for questions, and when that time is exceeded, and in this case it was more than exceeded, uh, the organizer or chair is, is responsible for closing it down so yeah. the meeting can end on time. And that's what happened in this particular case. Uh, and I think the confusion around the title of my talk had absolutely no reference to your book. Oh, it didn't? Or no, book. or anyone else's. Uh, right. The title of my usual Darwin biographical talk is Charles Darwin, The True Story. Mm. And the reason I call it The True Story is because I refute numerous myths about Darwin throughout the talk. I know, I know. Uh, yeah. so then when, in the, in the and so day. then doing the same with Darwin and Wallace was to refute myths about both men uh, in the same talk. So right. expanding. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. 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 Now it's clearer than I've ever known before. But, but, but you see, sometimes it's very easy. Let's put those things um, behind mm-hmm. us and let's first make the positions clear. Roy, you wrote a book, Darwin Conspiracy. Mm-hmm. Would you mind to read out a part for me? Sure. Mm-hmm. Then we know where you stand. After all um, the evidence I give, I come to page 162, which is close to the end of the book, and I say, now I am convinced that Charles Darwin British national hero, hailed as the greatest naturalist the world has ever known, the originator of one of the greatest ideas of the 19th century, lied, cheated and plagiarized in order to be recognized as the man who discovered the theory of evolution. And I believe that, and obviously um, I wouldn't have written the book unless I did so. Mm. And then, not long ago you wrote that, John was asked to review your book, which you didn't do. Uh, No, no I didn't. I didn't think, well, I was asked uh, to review the book and uh, was sent a copy and looked over it and decided that it was not something that historian of science should review. Why not? Well, because in my view, uh, the book is based on a, uh, a reading of the historical sources that is not done in a way that professional historians do and that the uh, argument pursued so forcefully fails to take into account uh, the majority of the materials that are used by people who talk about Darwin and Wallace. Therefore, it's, I think, in the view of a professional historian, it's considered to be not really the kind of thing that we should spend our time doing, uh, whether instead we spend our time uh, interacting with and arguing with other historians. And so uh, a book, uh, a popular book uh, like this, often doesn't get reviewed by historians for reasons like that. But still you are asked to do it. Well, I'm asked to review many books. Mm-hmm. But you only review the books you like. Well, actually, uh, a very wise uh, historian once said to me, uh, I, I'm only prepared to review books about which I can say that what I really think. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really admired him for saying that. Because I've ha- I have reviewed some books where I, I didn't like them or I disagreed with them. And I regret it, actually, afterwards, having been rather harsh. Um, you know, one of them was a Wallace biography, actually. Uh, and uh, now I think I, I, I prefer not to be so negative if I can help it. Mm. Uh, Before the conversation, I told you it's not necessary to be too British. 
<laughs> You'd like me to be more blunt. Too English. Yeah, <laughs> if I ask you, what do you think of it? Why didn't you review it? What do you think of it? Uh, one word. I, I, I can't summarize any book in, in one word. Um, uh, well, let's see. What do I think of the book? Uh, I would say that... One word will we get... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you a sentence. How about that? Let's give, mm-hmm. you, let's give you one word. The rubbish. Um, no, 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 no. I think... Um, I would say that the the book is uh, highly inaccurate, and that no uh, professional historian of science will ever accept uh, the argument argued for therein. That's what I think. Well, there we are. That's fair. That's fair. That's honest. You know, this is part of a discussion. It's part of the right. Well, no. I mean, it obviously isn't. The evidence I give, you know, is evidence which, in fact either does appear or doesn't appear in several other books, but also there's evidence in here collated from Darwin's own correspondence, as well as other things which actually take the argument much more further. And anybody on the uh, academic side of British or American cultural life in terms of history for Darwin and Wallace has done. And so when John says, you know, it, and a historian wouldn't uh, treat this properly because it's uh, a popular book, in fact it's got arguments which are highly uh, educational and intellectual in terms of the stance of Wallace and Darwin on theoretical ideas, mm-hmm. which John obviously is going to talk about. Well, uh, maybe I should clarify one I think popular book in the sense that it's a, it's a highly publicized paperback, uh, pu- pu- not published with an academic publisher. That's probably the definition of a popular book vis-a-vis uh, an academic book with uh, more footnotes and that sort of thing. If you see what I mean. With more footnotes? Mm. I think you only need the footnotes that you need, don't you? Well, anyway, th- that, that's uh, neither here nor there. Um, but I, what I would say about uh, the point you made about um, the evidence presented in your book is, I think, highly problematic. Because, first of all, uh, you rely on a number of historians or earlier writers who are highly critical of Darwin. Um, but um, you, you nowhere mention the fact that their work has long since been refuted. So, mm-hmm. Isley, uh, for example, uh, or the argument that Darwin plagiarized from Blythe by using the word inosculate. Well, we now know this is simply a false ac- accusation. It was an argument from ignorance, saying that because this word appears in Blythe's article and then in Darwin's notebook, that Darwin took it from Blythe. That is a, a in, a, it's an incorrect that's statement, that's because that's we now know this word was in more than a dozen of Darwin's own books. Yes. No, and not, Darwin in os- not in osculate. No, no, only after... No, I'm sorry. No yeah, only yeah, after the, the word inosculate is in a dozen of Darwin's owned books that he read Yes, and he uses the word inosculating in a letter to Henslow in 1832, which is four years before yes. the article by uh, Blythe. So what this book does is it repeats this um, uh, now d- d- discredited argument that because the word inosculate is in this article, Darwin stole from that man. No, it's not the only thing he says. Well, I didn't say it was the only thing he no, said, but I what said he that you do repeat this, then this story, which is, is then a shame, well, because we now know it's not true. In exactly the same way, he then imports into his article a whole list of things which are in Blythe's article, which in fact Darwin then says are mine, my example. Mm. But I, I, I've just tried to illustrate the case that Isley's work has been discredited, and no one accepts this work. Anymore. It's not important whether it's been discredited. The fact is that Isley said it. Okay, and well, put it in I, I, exactly, Isley said it. Yes. Having but, uh, said it, whether it's right or wrong, he didn't have your co- um, correspondence. So, uh, you would say that uh, uh, whether or not it has been refuted by other historians since it was published is irrelevant to whether or not you use it as a brick in the no, it's not found a brick. foundation those, of your... Those early stories arguments. are to set Darwin's character. Darwin, okay. Darwin copied by the stuff out, hmm. by the words he uses in the lists. Well, this, this is a... Well, well, let's well, perhaps move on to more interesting yes, exactly. uh, examples. Uh, let, me just say accept- let me just say this. The start of the book is to set Darwin's character. Mm, okay. Kind of the dark character. Darwin's <laughs> a dark character <laughs> all the way through the book, and he has to be. Otherwise, he couldn't have done what he does later. Well, in, in a sense, you're right. He has to be portrayed that way by you. Otherwise no, no, he not do at what all. You claim he Absolutely did. not. The problem is that this contradicts everything whoa, 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 whoa. we know Gruber, about Charles Darwin. Gruber Darwin's. actually makes the case, and, and easily does so, that in Darwin's case, he offered people the story of Beagle Journal which in fact was totally untrue. What, what version is this? The 1845 version. Yes, please tell us about that. I have to tell you about it. It's in the book. Well, but... You tell me what's wrong with it. 
Uh, well, you're making the case. So no, no, this case is in the you. book. You tell me it's wrong. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, you uh, make the argument in your book, which I've read a second time. Sure, uh, right. Uh, well, but I didn't write no. that. <laughs> um, but, you know, just to show proper respect before we discussed your book, I read it again. And uh, you make the claim, which is quite surprising, that Darwin uh, is trying to mislead his readers in the second edition of The Voyage of the Beagle by uh, changing his statements about his experience in the Galapagos Islands, etc., to make it appear as if Darwin had those thoughts and experiences at the time. No, no, I don't say that. Oh, says it. I'm sorry. sorry you, again, again, you've uh, appropriated the writings of another author. Tell you the group wrong. I, well, I am telling you the you group can't. is wrong. How can you say it? Well, I can tell you uh, why that's wrong. Uh, first of all, uh, Darwin nowhere makes a, a claim that the uh, text in the second edition is a verbatim record of the diary he kept at the time. Instead, he says in the introduction that it has been rewritten. Uh, then, of course, the first edition did that already. It is a rewritten version of his diary. He tells the reader that in the introduction. In the second edition, he tells us that he's added more stuff. But he didn't tell you where. Well, no author does that. What oh, no, 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 Sorry, Stop. please don't interrupt me. No author in writing a second edition in Darwin's day would go to the trouble of what you're suggesting, that he should uh, indicate at what passages it is entirely normal and consistent with all books published at the time in a second edition to write them in the way that so they why does, why does Gruber say what he said? I think Gruber is simply mistaken. It has a, it, presumably an ill so nature. Gruber is mistaken. Right? Well, and the first mistaken. list um, that he draws up about Isley and um, Blythe is also wrong because you don't accept the list. It indicates what? that he stole from, from uh, uh, It's not Blythe. that I uh, don't accept the list. It's that... Uh, it has been considered by many historians, and they've found reasons to find that this with is insufficient. With the word inoscillate, but not with the list. And okay, so... You know, so you, the list of examples he gives is an entirely copied list, almost, word so for word, So you think that even though the inoscillate example is no, no. egregiously wrong, that the rest of the I'm not admitting it's egregiously wrong. What I'm saying is that at the time, Blythe, uh, sorry, um, Isley had no idea. He says, and I quote, he says he seems not to have used this word ever before. And he didn't have the correspondence right. to look through where the word uh, identifies, mm. such as you do. In fact, it's quite an exceptional thing for an author on Darwin's day to give a list at the front of their book telling the readers all the changes they've made. <coughs> but some, yeah. some authors did that, and, and Darwin did that in some of his later books. In his later books, but not on mm. that one. No. Where the Galapagos seems to be no. one of the things that he's actually come across and distinguished himself by. Mm. Distinguished? Yes, indeed. In what sense? Well, any reader reading the 45 version would come up with the idea that Darwin knew a great deal more than he did when he was on the Beagle. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, yes. I see what yeah. I mean. I'm, I'm yeah. afraid that really is a, a, a misreading. No, it's not. Uh, because it's, there's nothing sinister or surprising <laughs> about the way the book was written. Really? It's come on, John. Well, I, yeah, I, I, mean, I, am, I am someone who, who, who reads scientific I books I from know, the period. I know, I know. Good for you, and I'm glad about it. But we're dealing with Darwin here. This is Charles okay. Darwin claiming in his 1845 version, just by having put it there, that in fact he knew a great deal more about the Galapagos, and that's why he became famous for his theory in the Galapagos, because of the 1845 version. Nobody knew about the Galapagos from the 1839 version. What do you mean no one knew about the Galapagos? The Galapagos oh, I'm sorry, I don't understand language. what you're saying when you say no one knew about the Galapagos. You've just mm. used the name of the Darwin, islands, Darwin uh, which are of course in the of what he found on the Galapagos is not in any way developed in the 1939 edition. Yes. It's developed entirely in the 1845 edition, well, which means that anybody better. reading that for the first time and only time, which was very popular, felt that Darwin and the Galapagos were one and the same when he was there in 1834, 1834, 35. Um, right. So you think that um, because Darwin has used the updated information that he's received since he wrote the first version, I mean, because he had completed the draft in 1837, before most of his specimens had been examined. Uh, and as, of course, he says in the introduction that as his uh, specimens and things are being identified by other people, he doesn't know what lots of these things are. As he gets this information, he incorporates it into the 1839 edition. Well, between 1839 and 1845, he gets a lot more information well, he about the specimen, which he also adds to the book when right. he rewrites it, right. which is the normal way of well, writing it might the be second normal, edition. But the fact is, without actually allowing people to understand, he is already claiming identity with some of the ideas of species from the Galapagos that in fact he only found out in 45. And that is the point. I'm sorry, I'm misunderstanding you. Uh, you. You're saying that Darwin saying is trying Darwin's to suggest to his readers Dar that he... Yes, that he knew more than he actually did when he was on the Beagle. Oh, that he's making a, a, a chronological point 
Well, a post-dated point, yeah. Right, I see what you mean. Right. Um, well, in a sense, there has been a lot of confusion about like, the Galapagos passages because the Galapagos became so famous after Darwin's life. Because of the 45 edition. Um, because of the 45 edition. But also it led to a lot of misunderstanding, and I think led to the myth that Darwin discovered evolution on the Galapagos mm -hmm. Islands, something Darwin himself never claimed. Uh, Darwin never claimed it. Actually, in his biography, he does. In his autobiography, mm -hmm. right at the end, he says, my ideas came first to me when I was on the Galapagos Islands. No, no, that's not true. Uh, what he, Darwin says in the autobiography is that uh, he was led to think about evolution by three principal forms of evidence. And he says those were the uh, fossils in South America, the the distribu distribution of modern species in South America and the creatures on the Galapagos Islands and their relationship to those in South America. Sure. He makes no statement about when those facts struck him, and it's identical in the second edition of 1845. He never says when these facts struck him, never and knows. this ambiguity is why people thought that Darwin had had an no, Eureka Darwin moment without ever Darwin actually having... Darwin uh, never it. explains when exactly where. He's always finding reasons why he doesn't actually put a date to anything. Mm. I, I'm, I, I think that's not true. Well, one, can, one can one yeah. many cases where Darwin says specifically where something. Um, but we still we still on, look, we're still on 45, right? And we've got the essay of 44. The essay of 44 is where we should start this discussion, I think. Okay. Perfect. Because the essay of 44 is Darwin putting all his ideas that he's had before then from after the Beagle into a form after the sketch he wrote in 1842. So basically, here we are with uh, with a new theory of Darwin's in an essay in 1844. And you, in your lecture, and all the lectures you've been giving, suggested that in fact Darwin wasn't under pressure to publish. No, you know, of course he not. was obviously, he just didn't get around to it. There was no reason to. Well, but in fact, that, if that, and this is the main point, the ideas of the 1844 essay are not the ideas of Oregon. For you to suggest that they were is entirely wrong. Right. So that would also mean that every work ever written on Darwin was entirely wrong. Well, think about, a problem it. think about it. Isn't that a problem? Think about it. If if his ideas of 1844 are entirely wrong in terms of the origin of species ideas, then you can't go around claiming that he didn't publish this theory well, because. Um, well, where did that just come from? That that, that, that the 1844 essay ideas are entirely wrong. Where did it come from? Um, well, let's discuss what ideas he had in the What were they? Well, yeah. Um, the uh, we're talking about the um, uh, the the. Uh, the theory which is always known as his um, migration theory. His migration theory, yes, you talk about that a lot in your book. Yes, I do. Um, again, I think this is, uh, this is misrepresented in your book as having a greater uh, importance in Darwin's theory than is recognized by, by any historians who write about Darwin. Well, isn't that exactly what the point of the book is, is that you, you are not representing it properly? Uh, I think that that's... that's there's a, tr there's a tricky problem with, uh, with your expectation that uh, uh, professional historians who all oppose your view uh, must somehow be on the same side, when in fact they're all against each other. <laughs> and if any of them could get some up one-upmanship on the others and show they were all wrong, mm. they would do so. Okay. okay. And therefore your claim, which you make several times, that in some way they have a, a bias to stick together and uphold the the myth of the super Darwin or something like that to me is uh, absurd I because think we're off the uh, point we we're, we're off the point we're not talking about what historians do as a collective body we're talking about the theory of 44 and the sorry. theory of 89 okay. mm -hmm. oh sorry of, of 50, uh, 59 right. so let's talk about the theory of 1844 in that particular book the essay which is as far as I'm concerned the idea that only geological forces can cause organic growth. Right. Um, I think this is a misreading of the original <laughs> document. Uh, tell me why. Well, I'll tell you why. Because I think uh, that you have gone through some of the specialist literature to find, that, for example, this point. Is that, is that right? You, you found well, another you didn't option. go looking for it. It came up, obviously. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, in, in books that you would have read. Yes. And uh, I think the problem there is that some people have uh, analyzed uh, these essays by Darwin very uh, carefully and have found uh, points like this where, say, Darwin emphasizes uh, this more than he does at other times and have, and have made arguments to, to say this. But you've used that work to say that his theory is only about this or that his theory is entirely characterized like that. And I, I don't recognize 
um, your, 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 your description You're not all my um, uh, when you say that it's all about migration. About for example, you make a very strong claim that Darwin had no workable theory of evolution whatsoever in the 1844 essay. I, I'm scratching he, my head. And he doesn't. I, I scratch my head at that. Because, away. Tell me because what? Uh, generations of authors have scratched their heads over a different question, which is that the uh, they thought that the 44 essay and origin was so similar, why did Darwin take so long to publish? This is what most people have okay. asked about okay. that essay. Okay. You've, read, you've, read, uh, you've read off the bat. It's been in print for uh, you've 101 years. Yes. You've read off the bat. Yes. Right. What does off the bat say about this? And he went through all the notes, just a you and not What does off the bat say about Also, that makes the case that uh, Darwin's theory wasn't static from the early days of his theorizing from the late 1830s until the origin was published. No, yes, but it goes further than that. He says that in the, in the 60s, in the 50s, Darwin's theory changed entirely. He does say that it changes uh, significantly. Entirely. Does he say entirely? Yes, entirely. Mm. Because nothing is left at the end of that period. Nothing. Nothing is I left at okay. the end of that period now from the 1844 essay. I think we're getting to the crux of the okay. question. Now. Yes. Nothing is left from the 1844 essay. Why don't we uh, discuss what the theory of evolution is since it seems to be an issue with you in your book that um, it's really Wallace's and not, not Darwin's. Well, and so when we use well, the word well, evolution well, and, well, the, and the theory well, and all of that, well, what are we talking about? Well, what are you talking about when you come up? Because I just told you there's nothing in the 1844 which remains in origin. Yes, okay, well, clearly that, that's not true. Uh, because the theory, uh, primarily for both Darwin and Wallace, is not about divergence, uh, nor is it about natural selection. The theory is primarily the theory of common descent. It is the theory of branching well, what descent. Do you what do you think divergence is? Divergence is, a, and it is an explanation for a particular tendency for divergence. It is not a replacement for branching descent, which it Darwin it is, developed it is, it is in the word 1837 to 8. No, he does not. No, he does not. He doesn't. Well, in fact, in fact, what do you Jennifer think that famous tree drawing in yeah, the Nobel exactly. It's a tree drawing. It's, yes. it's an establishment and of classification. It is not an establishment uh, of a diverging one. It's not a diverging oh, one. Oh, I see. So what are the branches doing? They're not Closing diverging. together? No. No. <laughs> are you talking about anything the other than diverging? <laughs> because I don't Darwin doesn't understand divergence. So, so when he draws a diagram where things yeah. split off from one another, that's not divergence. Not, in fact, you'll find that you go one, two, three, four. Yeah. And all of them are coming, and they, they've got to they a certain point. They have a common point. origin, which is and what I said, common descent. But that isn't the theory of descent. It isn't the theory of descent? No, that isn't. Okay. That in Darwin's <laughs> term. Because I'll tell you why. When does he draw that conclusion in his uh, essay of 44? When does he use divergence as um, a, a, a name for this right. type of modification in 84 essay? No, sorry, well, I'm not talking about... Uh, divergence. I'm talking about common descent. No, we are talking about divergence. That's in the book. My book. Well, That's I thought we were talking about what the theory of evolution really no, is. No, you started that. I'm talking. You did you ask me to tell you. And, and you're telling me, but you know, you're asking me something else. No, I'm saying that the theory of evolution is actually about common descent, branching descent. No, it's or not. Descent it's not. It's modification. modification. Yes, and that isn't what Charles Darwin is on about in the essay of 84. And do you know who tells us? You should know, because it <laughs> yeah. was Francis Darwin. Right. Uh, so you think that find the, any the, the branching tree... Any reference to descent with modification, which is divergence as far as he knew it, in the essay of 1844. Right. Uh, I've, 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 I don't know how to respond to that. Because He's just quite honest. In my view, it's there. And it's, well, very, says it wasn't. And it's very clear. Well, what difference should it make to you if, if, if someone else said that? You've read it yourself. But, but he said it. He's the son of a father who used this in his origin of species. And he said, when I went looking for it, the only mm. thing that surprised me was that it is not in the origin in the Right, I think it might be a semantic problem. <laughs> uh, what, what, what Francis Darwin is referring to there is what his father called uh, the principle of divergence. which uh, No, Darwin he didn't. He didn't use the principle of divergence until 19, 1857. Yeah, well, we're talking about Francis Darwin now. We're talking about Francis Darwin and his commenting on his father. His uh, father didn't call it the principle of divergence until 1857. Give some water, please. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, indulging no in some very dubious in, uh, uh, alternative history. So what do you think would have happened if uh, Wallace had not published his 1855 paper or sent Darwin his Tornate essay? It's very interesting. Um, Darwin, um, after coming out of the barnacle, um, uh, 
species uh, out of the barnacle idea in 1854 um, was really trying to get his theory accepted by Hooker uh, against um, uh, that of Edward Forbes um, uh, in terms of um, uh, ge geographical um, uh, distribution of animals. And um, Darwin's idea that you could um, allow um, migration of plants or small animals across the sea to um, uh, new geological areas where they could suddenly uh, appear as new species um, was actually consuming him. Uh, he wasn't going very far and Hooker kept on refusing um, uh, his analysis keep him saying. One of, one of the things he said was, um, sorry Charles, uh, but this doesn't explain why there are similar alpine trees in Australia and the middle of Europe, he said, because you couldn't migrate those across the uh, crater, they would just die. Um, Darwin kept on until he suddenly realized that people were offering him ideas from, um, from the Mediterranean, um, which showed that in fact insects, wingless insects and um, uh, land snails were found outside uh, on islands, when they were also found on the coast of Africa, which meant that his theory was under attack severely. He didn't want to change that theory. He didn't want to change it at all. But then, Wallace actually published uh, his paper in 1835. And suddenly, he didn't see the danger, even though he studied the documents intensely. Uh, he didn't see the danger, but Lyell did, and went there in April of the following year to tell him that Wallace was getting further into the answer to this question than he was. And Darwin didn't take the hint. He started writing another um, uh, pricey, if you like, of, um, of his former ideas so that he could actually predict, uh, present something for publication. And then Wallace threw up the other one, the Birds article in uh, September 1856. And suddenly, Wallace, uh, Darwin, who had been desperate for Hooker to say, yes, Charles, your theory is perfect and it's wonderful, suddenly had a huge coming together because suddenly he started changing. And this is where um, Ospovat details it completely. These are the changes that happened in the 1850s. Um, no longer geology, um, geological change uh, causing organic change. Time was suddenly a huge element where it had not been before for Darwin. Um, the whole question of the relations of species um, to uh, other or other um, uh, species of similar um, uh, characteristics was much more important than anything else. And he suddenly also came up with the idea, and Hooker said again, the theory isn't working, that in fact um, he should now um, come thinking about how um, to deal with all these things. And in December he said, no, I'm sorry, to Henslow, I'm sorry, I still can't work out anything to do with species. It's greatly perplexed. And then he got Wallace's first letter. And all the ideas that he'd been changing between um, September and December and Wallace's letter came to force and then he came up with his ideas. Now then, if he hadn't, if Wallace hadn't published and if Darwin hadn't um, uh, realized that he was on the wrong track because of Hooker's refusal to accept um, his theory, I don't know what would have happened. I really don't think Charles Darwin had the ability to get to the end of this because he didn't understand the version before that time. And this is the point we were just discussing. Yeah. Okay. So that's your answer to the question what would have happened if Wallace hadn't. Yeah, no, we would have been lost. Kept okay. being lost. Okay. Um, it's my turn. You, you don't need to ask me the question mm -hmm. because I have it. So no, I didn't respond. I didn't respond. Yeah. 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 Do I respond or do I give my own answer? Yeah, give your own answer. Okay. Probably contradictory. Um, right. What would have happened if Wallace hadn't published his 1855 mm -hmm. paper in this? and had not sent down the Tanate paper. In my opinion, uh, I think it's uh, very clear that Darwin would have continued working on the big unpublished book, Natural Selection, which was uh, a third of the way finished by the time the date we were discussing, uh, mid-1850s. And uh, judging from the rate of composition, uh, and also you can go by the estimates he gives the beginning of the origin of species, where he says, my work is nearly finished, referring to that one, and if you subtract the amount of time he's just spent writing the Origin of Species, uh, you come up with about the same completion date uh, by both these means, which is around 1860 or 1861, Darwin expected to publish his book. Now, in contrast to your uh, version or interpretation, um, 
uh, all other Darwin scholars accept that uh, Darwin has uh, every element of the origin of species without Wallace. So, for example, the 1855 paper. Uh, I found it curious that uh, in your book, you, although you, you mentioned very carefully that uh, Darwin writes his own notes in the margins of, da- of Wallace's 1855 paper, but you, I don't think you quote the lines where Darwin says, nothing new here, yeah. or where he writes, uses my simile of a tree, both of which are pretty clear indicators, which of course we know from much more evidence, uh, that Darwin has had these ideas for many years, but you seem to claim that Darwin derives them from that paper, which is a very curious uh, interpretation. Secondly, uh, as we know, the uh, new, the, the, as you would say, the new point uh, delivered to Darwin with the Ternati paper, namely divergence. Uh, well, you don't say natural selection, do you? Uh, but um, Darwin has already been working on or writing about his so-called principle of divergence since about 1854. So clearly, according to the documentary record of, of Darwin's life, and he is probably the most well documented in terms of his, his papers being preserved to scientists in the history of the world, and we know in extreme detail about the history of Darwin's theory. Uh, he had all of these elements independent of Wallace. So if Wallace had died and not, not done these things, clearly uh, Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection, as we know it, would have been published around 1860 or 61, but uh, not in the single uh, version or, uh, of the origin of species because of Wallace's intervention, but in a three or four volume work called Natural Selection. No, 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 absolutely, absolutely wrong. Why do you say, I know why you say, but I want you to tell me, why do you say that he was developing the theory of divergence from 1854? That's the, that's the consensus in the uh, expert community. Not, on with John, not with John Brown, not with, um, not with Davos, for that, not with Sir Gavin de Beer. What does Janet Brown say? Janet Brown says that the note of 1854 was all about, character, uh, about characteristics and uh, um, taxes. It was not about divergence. Bosworth said the same, and so did, um, and so did uh, Gavin de Bay. And David Cohn. David Cohn is a... Look, imagine a picture on an old newspaper. Okay. Right? Everybody knew they used to be printed with dots all over the place. Right? Yeah. David Cohn will look down and find a pattern of five dots. <laughs> right? without looking at the picture. And the picture is of Wallace standing there with divergence dripping from the pen that he's writing with in, 18 in 1855. 1855? 1855, yes. The whole of the, of the Sarawak law is about divergence. Oh, I see. So uh, there's divergence mm-hmm. in that one. What do you mean? Which is, is published. Have you not read it properly? Uh, well, yes, I'm afraid I have. Well, I'm afraid you haven't uh, understood but, it. Uh, I, I find it curious that, that, that in that uh, paper by Wallace where... Uh, uh, you, you claim divergence is there, and yet in all these writings by Darwin, which contain uh, various kinds of evolution and divergence across his lifetime, you you seem to say they're not. There. They're not my. I'm not saying this. Oscar Wilde is saying it. Right. I wish you read the book a bit closer. Oscar Wilde is saying quite clearly you that divergence. This in your book as evidence for your view. Only from Oscar Wilde. I use Osprey as a source who's been there and done that. But when I question them, you say that it's someone else's view. But if you use no, it, in, it will, in your no, argument... No, no, no. Uh, I use it as a quotation. And then I develop okay. from there. Yeah. And Osprey has gone through it. And he says quite clearly, you know, there was no <laughs> divergence in that 1834 paper. And Janet Brown says it, and so does... Actually, Bay. there's a big debate between uh, various historians like Janet Brown and David Cohen about when uh, divergence uh, is first... Uh, written about by Darwin, you don't mention any of that debate. It can't be a debate because Darwin well, doesn't, doesn't, he doesn't develop How can there not be a debate when there because is he doesn't develop the divergence idea. They just refer to the 1854 note as explaining it, as it, as a, as a note. How, where does show me where does Darwin develop divergence in 1855-56? Um, I think that. Um, the development of the principle of divergence. Not the principle, the idea of divergence before the principle oh, sorry, comes. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, we're getting another semantic problem there. The idea of divergence. Hmm. Okay, that's very confusing because everything we've just been talking about, I thought we were talking about the principle of divergence. No, 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 no. no which no, is no. what all those authors have been writing about. Two years before the principle of divergence, 1854 paper well, is what we've discussed. Darwin now is left, right, with the 1855 paper and he still isn't using divergence. He doesn't de- come back to divergence or ever get there in those two years. So why hasn't he? 
Well, that's not an accepted in interpretation. Well, it might not be accepted no. by you, but it's in the book, and I say it. Yes, but I think it's incorrect. You might I think it's incorrect, think but I'm not, I don't often 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 says it. Uh, you might do, but everybody else says not. David right. Cohn might say so, and David Cohn goes looking for words like division of labor, mm. right? And he finds a piece, division of labor, but it's not division of labor. What it's free it? competition of labor, which is almost an antithesis of division of labor. Mm. Hmm. Oh, Let's go back one. Boundary. Okay, so I left you with the idea that um, the 1854 um, note was not about divergence. So says all these people. So says John Brown, so says the Governor Bay, and so says the Thomas Which uh, 1854 note do you mean? The 1854, November 1854 note, which says uh, divergence, and everybody's interpreted it uh, different ways, but those three people say that this is not about divergence, this is right. about classification. <laughs> Let's avoid this uh, semantic problem we had before. <laughs> which sense of divergence do you mean? Well, I mean the sense of divergence, which is um, divergence, um, which is um, the central modification, the modification in evolutionary terms. Not, not, the not classification. Not the principle of divergence. The principle of divergence is 1857. We haven't got that yet. <laughs> okay. So, uh, right. Um, are you you're pr perhaps not aware of uh, when Darwin wrote his 1842 sketch of his theoretical views as they then stood, uh, he wrote a, a, a draft introduction page, uh, which uh, has not been, I, I, to my knowledge, not, not been completely published or transcribed until quite recently. I, I, I transcribed it on, on Darwin Online. And uh, it gives a very uh, interesting and concise overview of his theoretical views uh, from that point of time. And uh, lists I think quite well, I think, for a, for a modern audience, what Darwin's theory is all about because as all other writers, apart from yourself, I think, uh, except that most of the elements were there uh, at a very early date. Uh, that is uh, branching descent. Uh, you you use the branching place. descent. I'm sorry, I can't understand this. Branching descent is either descent with modification or not. Branching descent is descent with modification and divergence. And divergence is the overall encapsulation of that idea. You lost me there, sorry. Well, branching descent. What do you mean by branching descent? Does that mean Branch divergence? Branching descent, yes. Right. Well, that's the divergence, and then we both know what we're talking about. It's okay. branching it's descent. just that usually in, in this field, when people use the word divergence, they mean it in the sense that you're not using it. I'm not. I'm using <laughs> it in the sense that I am using, which is descent and <laughs> modification. The same with modification? Absolutely. Yeah, but that's not the way it's usually referred to when in Darwin studies. People mean something well, else. Well, you see, this is divergence. you've got a big problem here, right? Why are you not accepting... Dobos with us arguments on this. I don't accept every every. I don't say you should. I don't say you should. But this is down. directly opposing you about is what you're saying. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. I, I I think well. I think we disagree on our reading of us with us. Well, can, can you? The man makes it so clear what he's saying. Well, it seems possible. There to is disagree nothing. About a lot of there is nothing. No, there is nothing in Darwin's notes headed divergence, which is about descent and modification before a certain time. Right. I, I'm a f sorry, but I have to contradict you there. Um, it's very clear in Darwin's scientific notes, which are voluminous, uh, that he uh, has speculated on the system of evolution with um, branching descent from common ancestors since 1837 or 1838. Well, why didn't he develop it then? Uh, why didn't he develop it? He well, develop it. That's, that's mm -hmm. an ahistorical question you can't really ask. Well, why didn't someone You do say that he had it all the way through 55, 56. And he, he had not he doesn't really? even develop it in 55. He's all about his theory and Hooker, his, his uh, migration theory. He's not about divergence in any sense at all. And in fact, when he reads Wallace's first Sar Sarawak law paper, he actually says it's all creation with him. I think that's yeah. what he's in the word creation. That's yeah, but he doesn't mean creation, and Darwin doesn't no, understand he, that. No, he doesn't understand that. No, agree right, you agree with Right, so that is one point because Darwin doesn't understand, and then he goes on not to understand this about divergence, and yet da Wallace uses the word diverse, mm -hmm. change, happening. So, I'd be curious to know how uh, you come to terms with those notes by Darwin in the margin, where he says there's nothing new here, and well, it's, he, it's because he, he, doesn't uses my he doesn't understand. Did you Charles Darwin's not understanding what Wallace is talking about. It's the first time anybody... I tell you what, Lyell understood. So Lyell understood. On the one hand, you're saying Darwin doesn't understand what Wallace is saying in that paper, but on the other hand, you say that Darwin steals ideas from it. I didn't say that. You don't say that. I didn't say that. Not from the 1835, but he never understood it. 
I see. So it's never understood. So the fact that well, 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 I didn't say that. I didn't say that Wallace, uh, that Darwin stole any of the eighty five to five essay. I'm saying well, he didn't understand it. Okay. And th- and and, and that's in my book. And, and when Darwin writes, uses my simile of a tree. Well, what do you mean, my simile of a tree? The, Wallace well, uh, explains uh, it as clearly. I've been saying his tree of Wallace, life going well, yes, back to eighteen thirty seven. But he doesn't explain it in terms of divergence. Wallace does. And, and if you read both together, you'll see. an interesting criteria. Explain it in terms of divergence. So he's got a branching tree of life all the way back to 37, but because he doesn't need no, no, to work it, it's you not really that. that, you, not say really that you say this. I'm not accepting that. Hmm. I don't accept it. But he goes back to 37. You don't? No, I don't. So everyone who's ever written on Darwin is wrong. Talk or, or read or spell that to yourself. And, and that will do it. And that will with tell with you <laughs> exactly what <laughs> is, is in the notes. Why don't you read the notes to themselves? I mean, why would I want to make a about what these notes contain? Whoa, whoa, whoa. But we are talking go about. Read them wait, wait, no, no, no. We are no? talking about theoretical ideas here. I mean, theoretical ideas by somebody who understands the theory of the history of evolution right, is going to be much more useful in interpreting this than I am. Right? And also, that, who is hailed by a lot of people as a very good scholar, right, mm-hmm. uses all these ideas and tells that quite clearly. But until, until the 1850s, Darwin had no idea about divergence. He can't find anything in any of the notes, in any of Darwin's notes or papers or correspondence, that suggests that he, why he got the principle of divergence. Okay. I can accept the latter part of that sentence, that, uh, that Elspavat couldn't find anything about da- the origin of Darwin's uh, principle of divergence. You're still how, how he that. came to it. Oh, how he came to it. Yeah, yes. Um, but I, I, I don't agree that uh, that uh, Darwin doesn't have a, a, a branching tree of life. I know. From, from, I know. From, from, from what you say. Um, but you're, you're dismissing most of that in here. You're not dismissing me. And that's one of the factors that you have to bear in mind. The people who you're dismissing, John and Brown, you're not dismissing me. I pulled together other people's ideas and pulled together this book simply because that's the okay. way the story reads. Well, well I, w- I was starting to ask you another question, which is um, if. Uh, if so much, if this is so important to you, to identify what Charles Darwin knew and thought in during these specific times in his life, wh- why have you uh, relied on what other people have assessed or argued about these Swear things, you, John? and and not gone to the papers themselves? Swear you? I, 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 sorry, does it worry you? Well, I'm, I, I, I'm asking you, why you if, if 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 you think it's so important what's in these papers. Are you worried that somebody pulls together other people's academic ideas and uses them? Are you saying that Osprey that's wrong? Uh, I think that your interpretation of Osprey well, is wrong. Then you've got to go back to Osprey and read it, haven't you? <laughs> well, not, uh, not my interpretation is no, right. Not, <laughs> not, not, not unless you can read the book and see the, the notes I've made and tell me that they're wrong. Well, And the interpretation is wrong. Maybe we could do that, but probably not on the terms. Not on the terms that we're going to do it, no. Yeah. And, and then... When Osterwald says there is nothing in any of the notes which, which allows us to understand that Darwin um, finds the principle of divergence, nothing. And suddenly you're asked about the Bird's article by Wallace. And there he explains in absolute detail the, um, the road of divergence and extinction from a hornbill to a hummingbird, you know, in terms of divergence with modification. And suddenly, Darwin's theory changes. Changes beyond all recognition. Uh, according to according, according to, to you and some... According to, according to what's the back? Mm. Janet Brown. Right. Have a but, look at it. But not everyone. Well, not you, obviously. But I mean, that's, uh, that's because you've got your own views on things. Well, we all have our own views. Well, no, I'm, I'm using other people's work. Well, you didn't answer my question about why you didn't go back to the original... I'm curious. And, and why should I? Why should I, I try? First of all... First of all, you you need a certain amount of training to read these papers. So why would I try to re-investigate what Osterwald has already investigated? Well, how much time do you think there's in the world, John? Well, indeed, there's not enough. But uh, the, the 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 claims and the conclusions of your book are very strong. And uh, indeed, if uh, Darwin were alive, you could be sued for libel. Oh, so well, you please. You well, know, you, you, you could actually you could assu- you could accuse him of, you could accuse him of plagiarism. You, well, you do yeah. accuse him of that. Indeed, I do. Uh, all of these things, you could be taken to court for them. Oh, you right? think? Oh, come on. Come on. If, if you accuse a living person listen, of these are things. Are we down to this at the moment, where you're trying to say, right, that you shouldn't I'm be trying able to, to say these things? I'm trying to right? establish the so importance of... So you take also what? I'm trying to establish the importance of why 
from I would assume from your perspective you would want to know as precisely as you can the truth of this problem. No, that's you, John. I find other people's opinions about things which I don't know about, but which they seem to know about very clearly, mm -hmm. and in fact are backed up by other people. But Much again and again, you, 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 you are quite ready to dismiss uh, large numbers of uh, authors and historians. No. It's because who you claim it's because Darwin in your book you claim they're all wrong. Darwin, about Darwin. Darwin has been read and read and read and interpreted for years. Wallace has only recently come into it in terms of his stuff. Come on, John, be honest. Wallace when did you start? When did you start reading Wallace's paper on birds? Well, uh, 1999. Right. Okay. I, 1999. A, I, I don't think you're aware that I'm also a historian of Wallace. I'm it not just a Darwin historian. Matter, but the fact is, we left it in 1999. There's something wrong, isn't it? You know, so here's a man with a, with a huge amount of knowledge offering ideas in a paper which suddenly causes Charles Darwin to change his theory. Well, and you think uh, that is accidental? Uh, then when did that and suddenly he comes up with a primary uh, theory of, um, of um, uh, sorry, a principle of divergence, and suddenly he understands about species, and you think this is accidental? Yes, well, Do you? again, um, we don't agree on that point, because uh, Darwin has um, almost all of the elements of his theory before these papers are, are written. Absolutely well, nonsense. You, you, you can't give me any, you can't get, I'll tell you what the challenge is, you can't give me any, any indication of Darwin's ideas changing between 1854, that note of not, of, um, of not divergence, from there up until the beginning of 1857. I challenge you to give me any development of Darwin's theory of divergence in that time. Okay, have you read uh, Stauffer's edition of yes, Natural Selection, yes, right, which is a careful analysis of how Darwin's thinking changed in that Change period. in terms of? In many things. No, in terms Dozens of... Dozens of elements of Darwin's thinking change in this period, none of which you address. Mostly in terms of geographical, uh, geographical spread of animals. This is what Stouffer sees for the first time. Well, um, this reminds me of the point about the uh, plagiarism from Wallace. Which is that, and which we see in the 1858 Darwin Wallace papers. Um, if we went to paper. Sorry, Darwin didn't have a paper in 1858. Well, there is a published. There is a published. You use that as a shorthand, right? Well, and that suggests that, is that Darwin wrote a paper. He did not. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I did use the correct technical language for this object. No, no, we no, are discussing didn't. a publication. No, you didn't. Well, well anyway, three different different I'm not going to quibble you with you. Well, how I, can we get to the bottom of this if you're not prepared to quibble? I'm using the correct language. You're quibbling. I used paper. It is a scientific paper published in 1858. It wasn't a scientific paper with three elements drawn from various publications. Okay. well, whatever. Can I use another word? Would yes. that be fine? Article? No. Well, what is this? Paper? Notes. <laughs> Extracts. Pulled together. Sorry, I'm referring to the entire thing. The Linnaean. The entire, about the Linnaean the entire article document. starting with the names Darwin and Wallace from the first page to the last yes. page. And what's the substantial bit of that? What is how, Wallace. how shall we refer to this item? Extracts. From both? No. Well, okay. Wallace didn't throw extracts. <laughs> he threw in a theory. <laughs> a complete theory. Anyway, let me get back to my original point about this publication. Uh, being that Darwin, uh, in this publication, who according to, the, to your view, has stolen his ideas from Wallace. Yes. Uh, he gives his uh, views, and uh, uh, supported by three broad kinds of evidence, as far as I can recall. Uh, the fossil record, heredity, uh, embryology, oh, and uh, geographical distribution. Whereas Wallace relies almost primarily on geographical distribution. So it seems odd that oh, the... Are you describing... No, please don't interrupt. Uh, now, sorry, I'm just to, this how, how just to get this straight. Just to get this Are you describing Wallace's Tanati essay here? Yes. I hope. I'm saying that a Darwin... Geographical distribution. I'm saying that Darwin provides more kinds of evidence as the basis for his thinking in his extracts than Wallace does. And therefore, if Wallace's uh, paper is the source of Darwin's ideas, it doesn't make sense that the plagiarist has more it's kinds of evidence. It's a total travesty. How so? It's a total travesty of what happened at the Linnaean. Well, I'm not talking about what happened at the Linnaean, I'm talking about the content of the you, And you don't mention Wallace, um, Malthus, and you don't mention Asa Gray's letter. I don't need to, I just need to mention the points I did mention. Okay. Please answer that point. Please answer what point? Well, that Darwin gives more kinds of evidence. evidence. Kinds of evidence not related to division of labor, not re related to the... I, I, I still don't see that answer to the question. Well, of course it does. It's not related 
So I see. Uh, so in your opinion, it's irrelevant. No, it's because it's Wallace's idea that Darwin has had in his book since June, uh, since June the third. Right. But, right. But according to you, well, the, although Darwin has lots more evidence. No. He doesn't. No. <laughs> the principle of the theory, the Ternate theory, is quite simple. Right. And therefore, that principle is allied in Wallace's um, discussion to examples. Darwin has examples of his research into almost everything under the sun, right? And mm -hmm. then has to find these things to try to fit it into the stuff that he's taken from Wallace. Right. Women, you, 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 uh, women, you are doubting the evidence about the, uh, the evidence in the, the votes on June the third and June the eighteenth. You still insist that he got you on the eighteenth? I. Oh, of course. Oh, for goodness yes, sake. That's top date. For goodness <laughs> sake. You're <laughs> suggesting that after all the evidence that you saw, that in fact, Darwin still received that letter on the 18th of June? Uh, I think... Now I know where you're coming from. I think that there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to doubt um, Darwin's statement about when he received the letter. What? I can't see any reason to doubt it whatsoever. Let me you ask say you this with a cold face. Let me ask are you, you Are you trying to gene me up or something? I mean, no, you know. I'm perfectly sincere. Right. I, I, tell me, I, tell I believe me where that before tell me, tell I turn me. of your book. Oh, and of course, I believe you, of course really you did, and you have to. I, because if you don't, if you don't believe it, suddenly Darwin's in trouble. <laughs> oh, I don't think Oh, so. yes. The oh, reason yes. Darwin wouldn't be in trouble, and isn't, is the fact that we have this enormous documentary record of his theory. Oh, no, over no, 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 you I asked you to explain it for two years. You can't even give me one example of it. I can give you limitless Inside examples. Inside 1855 and 1856? Where? I'm sorry, I've just mentioned a 20-year period, and then you always come back to... Well, yes, because this is the time the theory changed, from being the basic theory of, of um, yeah, uh, yeah, migration I'm to this new theory. I'm sorry, I can't agree with that, because uh, right. the, basic, uh, the basic core of Darwin's theory, from the beginning un until his death, remained common that sense. That is not true! I'm How can you possibly sit there and say that? What, what elements on the, the origin of species... Right? Hmm? What elements in the original species are in the original document, um, in the 1844 theory? Well, I, I would go back even before the 1844 yes, theory. Yes, I know you will. Um, to, the, to the strange diagrams, anyway. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, to the tree of life. Tree uh, of life. And uh, to natural selection. The, the, the Look, as far as, as, far as Darwin was concerned, as far as Darwin was concerned, the only things that changed in his whole pantheon of, of species were the leaves on the trees bud-like. Bud-like came, produced leaves, the leaves died, new buds came the next day. Nothing changed from that. Ef everything else in the world was set. And suddenly, in 1857, Darwin suggests to himself in a note, suddenly, I agree, that now um, species can originate varieties wherever they are in the world. Suddenly, the whole idea of, the, um, of new lands causing strange things to happen to migrating species, but they jump into another form, it's gone. And he's dropped it for the first time in 1857. Right. I, I, I think uh, our inability to agree on these points is going to continue. Uh, uh, well, especially if you don't... Perhaps we should talk about the date question, because I think that's an accessible uh, question well, about... Uh, so you may, perhaps you'd like to summarize no, your point no, you about the date. You, you summarize. Well, I, I, I won't summarize your argument. Well, uh, okay. it would be best if you did something. Well, it's not an argument. It's, a, it's an absolute um, <laughs> a defined piece of research. Now, <laughs> you know. So it's not an argument, it's a certainty. No, it's a defined piece of research. Well, I didn't that's, say it's a how, certainty. that's how we use the I word argument in history. Summarize it, please. Charles Darwin, um, Charles Darwin in 1858 um, was desperately trying to find new things to put into his species book. And, um, and basically what happened was that he was getting nowhere and he had bees and he had uh, all sorts of uh, large genera, small genera hanging out of his ears and suddenly he got the letter from Wallace. When did he get the letter from Wallace? Well, the traditional story is he got it in the 18th because that's what he told Hooker. A spin doctor tells people what to do and then people use it for years afterwards. Oh dear, Sir Charles, I'm in trouble. This January, it's June the 18th and I've just got Wallace's letter. And then you go back to the postal services and you find that the letter arrived in London on June the 2nd. Sorry, and then sorry where does it say that? What, where, does where, what? where does it say that that letter No, it Wallace doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. Oh. But the letter arrived in the same post as a letter to oh. uh, the address in Leicester. How, how, how do you know and that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. And could not have arrived 
by any other post until July the 2nd. So, ah, that, right. uh, that I think is not correct. Uh, I know it's not correct. The, if you read the introduction to the correspondence of Charles Darwin, about the, this date, they've um, they've gone into the dating no, uh, question. Well, I did. No, they, the they, they really haven't. And uh, they show that, uh, in fact, there's a perfectly plausible um, route for the letter to have arrived on that date. No, there was not. And I tell no, you why. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Let's get this straight. Let's get this straight. Case, there was the not another mail delivery from the archipelago until July the second. <coughs> there was certainly India and China mails, but they never took any mail in. Singapore from the from I think the we've, 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 we've jumped into this a bit too far. We should start at the beginning, which is, uh, uh, on what evidence do you assert that the letter was sent on a certain day? How do you Wallace's know when it was declaration sent? of March 9th, and we also know that the boat called at Tenate on March 9th. Sorry, what? Say that again, the declaration? I didn't say declaration. I thought you just said Wallace's oh, declaration. Did, sorry. Um, Wallace, Wallace wrote his essay, and said that he put it on a boat which left Tanaki on May the 9th. When did he say that? 1877, 1879. Uh, does he actually give the date? Yes, in, the, in, the, in that. In that one, which, was expected, um, which was expected a few days later on. Doesn't he say that he posted it a few days later? Well, a few days later, okay. Okay. Which was so March the 9th, because the ship was up. The, so the, so the ship was there on March the 9th. There's a, there's a, a lot at stake. No, no, no. Yeah, no on no, the no. question of this. Uh, no, 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 of course not. Because the no, I'm, I'm restating you, and the I think movement, a fair way. The movement from Juno yeah. to Ternate, where the letter was posted from, happened because he had the illness at the end of February, and he wrote it, and he went back to Ternate, and he posted it. And the only ship he could have put it on was the one which called at the island on March the 9th, because there was no other boat going to call it to Nadi for another month. This is a, this is a very unusual form of uh, argument with historical data, which is, if I can summarize your view in a neutral way, um, uh, according to the evidence we have here, uh, Darwin's let, uh, Wallace's letter, uh, if it was sent on this date, which we don't know, um, should have arrived on this other date. Wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. if it was sent on this date? Yes. Yeah. Well, we don't you know the sentence. No, days. but which day do you suggest it was sent on? I don't know. Right. So I there was one boat. I think we will There was one boat and it arrived no, 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 in England. No, 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 no. I don't think we can accept that. Oh, I can. Because, well, can. That's, because, one, because that's the, the point whole I'm of the research. Make, which is that I think you cannot have such a degree of certainty uh, at this date and time based on such a, a great amount of absence of evidence. We don't know what date was on the letter. No one has seen it. We don't know when it was sent. We don't know how heavy it was. Yes, we, we don't do know, know what sort of sent. postage we was put on. We do know what it was sent. Well, but you're, you're relying on a recollection from... Date. Not a recollection. This is a date established by you a know that professor. A, you, you know that a, a, a mail steamer sailed on a certain day. No, on March the 9th. Yes, but you don't know that the letter from Morris was in it. Well, how could it not have been if it arrived on June the 2nd? Because it couldn't have arrived on June the 18th. Why not? Because there were no posts from the, from the, from the right, archipelago. So uh, oh, there was no post on the archipelago for a month. And Darwin could have received the letter he could any not. time before the 18th. No, he could not have received it any time before the 18th. Why not? Because he writes to Hooker when he's been writing about new 46-page introduction or an introduced 46-page element in terms of divergence into that into that big book, as you call it, in, in, on June the 8th. So he couldn't have received it after June the 8th because Darwin was not about to write about divergence because he hadn't thought of it since he wrote to Asa Gray the previous year. In 1857. In 1857. Yes. So uh, you, you still maintain that, that, that the letter to Darwin must have been posted at, at the time you, you believe it was. I don't believe it was. And it's, uh, it's now proven. Well, how can it be proven? Because well, we the have boat left there on March the 9th. But, but, but what boat. you cannot prove is that the letter from Wallace was on that boat. We cannot prove that. That is, that is just not. Wallace says he put them together. He posted the letter from Tanati with the letter for, to Bates, and Bates's brother in Leicester. Both went together on the same boat. Bates's brother arrived on the second of June. Wallace's didn't. Uh, according to Darwin, there's a the problem with that is that uh, these are two items sent through the mail which are of different weight. They were both second class. What, what, Wallace seen? always sent his we mail second it. class, and there was it. nothing to do with weight because weight no. was not important because it came via Southampton by ship. 
It did not go now. over. Yes, because Wallace Much always. Sent. And the other thing is, you've got to establish that Wallace never sent his mail always by second post. Because he did. He saved money that way. Fair enough. Nevertheless, we don't know when it was posted. We don't know when it was written, and we don't know when it was received. And yet, you speak with such certainty. God. You have to show that the letter could have arrived at a different date. I don't. The burden of proof is on you. This burden of proof is what he I wrote about diversion. What I say. What I'm I think. All other historians of science say is that we don't know. Yes, I know. Well, it wasn't easy out for you all. No, no, that's, I'm afraid that is the most reasonable mm, conclusion right, one yeah. can come mm, to, yeah, based yeah. on the limited evidence. Mm. But you, on, co- on the contrary, were based on limited evidence, make uh, a very um, uh, positive and certain conclusion based on insufficient evidence. This is a puzzling thing. We're talking for about a human being. We're talking about character. We're talking about uh, a man. Oh, what? Well, yes. Two, no, Darwin, oh. two letters out of three in 18 months mm-hmm. arrived later than they did. And in both, Darwin's, uh, was his ideas appear. And, and, and uh, right, so you, you think that uh, I think. based on, on the date that Darwin says he's received the letter, <laughs> that they couldn't have been received on that date? I'm saying that Darwin lied about when he received the letters. Because and who did he lie to? He lied to this, his biographers. His, his I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't he, think he, Darwin was no, writing Darwin to his lied. Darwin lied to posterity, if you like. But he was writing this in personal letters to Wallace. What? In a personal letter to Wallace. He tells Wallace what date I got the letter. Yes, he does. So how did Darwin know that Wallace had preserved that letter for his biographers to read? That seems like a pretty implausible whoa, whoa, whoa. tactic. Start again. I, th- I said that seems like a pretty implausible no, no, tactic. That. That Wallace counted, uh, sorry, that Darwin counted on Wallace to keep his personal letter with Darwin's, as according to you, fake date, in order to uh, poison no, the, the mind that. of I history. Did, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Oh. I didn't say that. And what I actually um, could say further than that is that in Darwin's case, we know that he didn't receive the letter on the day that he said he got it. How do we know that? Because he couldn't have received the letter because he replied to it before it arrived. He replied to it before it arrived. Before it arrived. Eight, seven man. I, I'm afraid I'm not familiar I with know, that one. But <laughs> you're not familiar with Wallace's postal <laughs> habits either. Um, Wallace's postal habits meant that he always started send this stuff second class. And the letter arrived second class on May the 2nd where in does, London. Where does the boat, Wallace the say boat, that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. Let here. me finish this. Okay. On the 2nd of May, on um, the 2nd of January. Sorry. We've got I've got my... <laughs> We know that Darwin did not receive the first letter from Dar- from Wallace on the date he said he did, which was just before, a few days before the end of April, 1857, 1856. Can, can we focus on that one? We are focused on that one. Uh, no, I mean on the on the point that we know he didn't. Yeah, we know he didn't. Yeah. Uh, can we focus on that? I am focusing on it uh, because I'd just like to to question that. You, no, don't question it. I haven't told you what it is. No, I, I I am going to question it because I don't think that's a correct statement. You say we know he didn't receive yes, it on know. that date. I know, uh, but. Again, the problem is that uh, even though you've you've looked very carefully at the sh- at the, oh, the, the shipping don't record, diminish what I've done. I've actually given you a record which I actually shows no, when no, that has no, arrived. I, I don't think that's diminishing. I, I said you've done it very carefully. Uh, you've looked very carefully at the record of the the, uh, the steamer shipments, uh, but uh, I'm afraid uh, that a historian cannot make the argument you're trying to make, which is that certainly this letter uh, must have been must have arrived on this date. This semantics, John. You're dealing with you're dealing with yeah. evidence inside other people's letters, um, and then you're trying to diminish it by saying that these are historical certainly you can't possibly be sure of. Yeah. As a historian, you're sitting there on a podium. You've yeah. got to get off there and be a human being. You know, <laughs> Wallace <laughs> sent his stuff second class. What, what the, the, the Wallace the, the, sent the, his stuff second class. The class he sent is irrelevant. We're just talking. Oh about no, no, no! It's not. We're talking about whether or not no, it's things not were sent on a, on a date but didn't arrive on a date they should have. That's what we're really talking about. No, no, we're about. saying that Wallace always sent his letter second class. Therefore, Darwin, re- Darwin replying, saying, I'm writing this on May the 1st is wrong because he couldn't have arrived with Darwin until May the 4th. So Darwin replied to the letter before four days before it arrived. Before you believe it should no, arrive? No, before it arrived. Ah, but then again, you don't know that. No, nor do you. <laughs> Right. And so the problem is that we have uh, a schedule of uh, arrivals and, and departures and things like that. And on the basis of this evidence, you determine that a letter must have arrived on a certain date, when in fact it's impossible to know that. Yeah, I know. I know. This is but the biggest yes, problem. Yes, but when, when you understand that Wallace always sent his mail second class, 
the mail shipment always arrived second class two to five days after the third yes. class. Uh, it's, it's a very, yes, it's very know, tempting it's logic. It? Yeah. It's a tempting logic, but uh, I'm afraid it, it, it is not mm -hmm. acceptable. Hey, listen, I don't, make this, I don't make this we, a smoking we, gun. We, we don't. I'm not making this a smoking gun. Oh, so this, is, this is not, so as far as I'm concerned. you happy to give this up? No, as far as I'm concerned, it's just right. evidence, as far as I'm concerned, of a certain kind. The evidence I want to talk about is the fact that in between 1855 and 1857, sorry, 1854 and 1856, Darwin did nothing to show that he had the principle of divergence waiting to be spelled out. Right, so because Darwin was working on other t uh, topics at that time. Other topics, he, he was working on trying to get Hooker to believe his theory. I wouldn't say that was really Darwin's primary activity. Hey, well, have a look at the record. He does indeed talk about that from time to oh, time. He talks about Edward Forbes constantly. Yes, I, 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 that's another part of your book I found rather no, confusing. No, you your, 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 your Forbes treatment seems to suggest that Darwin was in trouble uh, on the basis of uh, Forbes' theory, when in fact Forbes' theory was quite a, quite a bad one, and it was, was badly discredited, whereas Darwin's counter-arguments developed in this period of time were quite successful. Why was Darwin so worried about the Forbes then? I don't agree with you. Well, Darwin is not worried, he's not worried about Forbes. He hates Forbes no. argument no, because he, it contradicts he all contradict of the things that what? Darwin He contradicts uh, the, the whole idea of uh, migration. That's what it contradicts. Distribution of animals by migration or distribution of animals by um, Darwin uh, never land being cut to argue off from against the, the what he thinks is an entirely ad hoc and unreasonable assertion from <laughs> utterly paltry really evidence but Hooker that, says, Hooker says that he's uh, right. new consonants uh, could have arisen in order to explain the distribution. Hooker, Hooker says uh, whereas Darwin argues instead that perfectly mundane, plausible and natural argue. causes uh, should be uh, used instead. Natural causes, Hence the like jumping from one form into another? Natural, natural causes? causes means not supernatural causes. Well, that's what he put in his theory. Per no. Right, right, right. So, we talk about what are about we're not going to agree. We didn't yeah. expect to agree. No. And, uh, and in you a way... One? Did you get anything closer? No. Not at all. I mean, John, John's done? beliefs, right, as a historian, are John's beliefs as a historian. Um, my, the people who I use in the book as historians, right, are either genuinely uh, forceful and, and believable or not. So the evidence still stays in the book. It doesn't go anywhere else. Yeah. John still has to make the case that, in fact, uh, you know, Janet Brown is wrong, and so is um, Tom Ross for that, and you know, so is everybody else. What do you think, John? Uh, Did anything change for you? You're still not going to review the book? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would say to review the book. I would say that I've read a number of reviews of the book. No, uh, yeah, I've read one. Which I found the most devastating book reviews I have ever oh, read. Oh, oh, tell uh, me more. Who uh, reviewed this book? In fact, I even saw one on a creationist website called Answers in Genesis. Oh, yes, because which you, was, you read that. Well, I just... <laughs> I don't read Answers in Genesis. It's something I found as a result of a Google search. And uh, the I was quite surprised to find that the author was a writer of such quality. Yeah. And uh, yeah. he'd done his homework very carefully. And, uh, Do you see gosh, what he's playing? No, have you written a reply? Oh, yes. Look Where's at George Becker on his website. I oh. take him apart. Oh. Okay, well, I'll have, have pleasure do. in looking so at that. Google it. I George Becker on his website. But let's not restart our discussion. What were you, you were making a point? Um, it's about reviewing the book. No, I think... Well, Dead in reviews, he says. You know. Yes, I... I mean, and the fellow in Australia? The madman from Australia? I'm not sure you mean that. I can't remember his name by that. Anyway, that so you want a sort of summarizing statement from me? Yes. Yes, sir. Um... Yes. Well, I've, uh, we've, we've talked about some of the uh, points in your book. We've battled over some of the uh, semantic questions, but alas, so we, well, we've not come to, to any terms. I, I for, my, my, for my point, have to remain uh, on the position I started with, which is that um, the vast majority of, of evidence that exists for the thoughts of these men um, it's entirely inconsistent with your book and the conclusions in your book, and therefore I cannot see that I or anyone else should accept your arguments based on, on the evidence that exists. And that's, that's, that's where we have to close. And as for me, um, you know, the, the characters who have offered their scholastic, scholastic ideas about what is happening here and how it happened um, are still valid and totally valid, and all the evidence of the votes and the letters do is to back up uh, their interpretation. Because basically, when you come to it, um, you know, 
you're either right, I'm either right, we're either a little bit right or a little bit wrong. But you, as far as you're concerned, are totally right. And, and as far as I'm concerned, all the academics in here, chosen for the kind of uh, information they give, which is very interesting, um, are wrong. And, and therefore, most of your colleagues in Cambridge and Harvard are also wrong. I would, uh, well, I, I think that most of my colleagues in the site will not agree with your use of their work. And, well, David, well, and no historian, and indeed no academic of any field, would say that they were always absolutely right. That's the kind of certainty we don't use uh, in, we don't in, use? in intellectual endeavor. But we don't use. Yes, we, academics. Academics, we academics don't yes. use. Hmm. Or, and and I, because I, I was just answering the point you made about um, how I, I, I probably thought I was absolutely right. No, no, I would never use language like that. That's just not warranted, not acceptable. Which is why I object to that point in your book, which is that your, the certainty you assert is just utterly unjustifiable. You could say, I think well, it was like this, but to say that one is absolutely certain based on historical evidence. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely certain based on the people talking in the book that I'm right. And, um, and it's a simple question there. Where okay, do we go from there? For your next edition, uh, check the originals. No, for my next edition, make sure that the people I quote have done the work themselves, because those are the people which matter. And but since you hadn't it. written on it, you know, how can you possibly do it? I think you can do it. Of course. Maybe we should change from water to something. Or at least try. We've even worn out the audience. Englishman, I'm Welshman. It would never, it would never, it would never come to that, would it? <laughs> <laughs> For too much to lose. <laughs>